together and like it. Like, do you think that might be some kind of little, you know, cherries were grown here fairly. Apples and peaches were the big fruit as far as tree fruits, but you know, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, you see cherries mentioned fairly often. Here's our tiny town picture for Gail Pinalpo. <laughs> this is uh, the, the rectory at Tommy Town. That's Father Bandini, the founder of Tommy Town. And now you look at this beautiful landscape. There's our yuccas. Father Bandini was a well-known scholar of agriculture. He was talking to the university and, and keeping up on the latest agricultural methods and then passing that information on to the tiny town farmers. So it makes sense that he, in other words, he had a, a, an interest in growing things. So it makes sense that his, his place of living would, would have some nice landscape. Wandering Jew, very clear to see. And 
now he's got it on a, a stick tripod with a chain holding it. Here's some kind of evergreen in an old, looks like an old uh, metal pot of some kind. Here's some flowers, or a flower pot. But look, maybe wisteria. All right, the reason this picture was made in 1933, this is the home of Tom Rogers in Fayetteville. That picture was made because the Fayetteville Unification Committee awarded Tom Rogers first prize for home improvement in his landscape under unfavorable conditions. Now, let me tell you what they define as his unfavorable condition. That he is an African American. Oh. Isn't that incredible? And look, oh, it's, it's just beautiful. Look at this. What do you think that? That's very clear. Now that's not the pipe vine, is it? Pipe vine has a different kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, morning glory. Morning glory. What part of that was this? Well, that would have been the historic African American community. So uh, toward near, near uh, the better the, cemetery up in that area. Yeah. Place. Yeah. Silver something. Or another. Yeah. Tin cup is what it's worth. But just, just an amazing, I mean, when you think of the history, the backstory of this photo, it's just, it's just kind of stunning. Well, up by War Eagle, um, I stayed at a house that was going to be torn down, but it was an old farmhouse. Well, that didn't have many plants except jonquils and whatnot, but across the way was the shack that their help mm -hmm. stick. And they had a lot of fruit bushes and, and the edible things mm -hmm. stuck around. Not in any kind of landscaped way, but, but you know, probably for necessity. For yeah. 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 Stuck any little seed yeah. in the ground. Right. Yeah. This is the idyllic. Now here's what we all imagine. Uh -huh. When we think of the Ozark traditional way of life, and it this beautiful little log cabin with a perfect little stem. But look at her plants lined up on the shelf. Here she's got some hanging here. Some kind of shrub plantings here. Can I go back and ask a question about the Rogers? Yeah. Have you ever thought about why he wasn't picture in the house? I mean, that's one of the few pictures you've shown us about house without people. I mean, I understood it because it's like, hmm. well, be, but it was for the moment. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but if I were getting an award for my landscape, you'd think I'd be Yeah. But if, and they gave they lots of awards. I mean, that wasn't the only category they gave. It would be interesting <laughs> to do some more research to see. See the, the others, yeah. 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 That's good. Maybe question. if he was African-American, he wouldn't understand some, it's, that's quite possible. I mean, really, to say unfavorable mm -hmm. conditions because he, of his color. No, they skin. served on the police department. But it wasn't a they, I don't it think was allowed to live in the No, I know. Yeah. You're right. It, I, yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So there's our perfect little Ozark farmstead. Here, that's got to be with serious. <laughs> <laughs> There's some yucca. But look at that clean yard. Even though it's, it's winter time, it still looks like it's been just scraped down. I'm not going to go much beyond the, I think this might be as modern as I get, this slide program. But here, this is, you know, Kind of reminded me of the houses that I grew up with going to visit relatives as a kid. You had that looks like maybe some kind of a little elm tree. <coughs> this is a maple for sure. And it, it, this question always arises why is there a door there going where? You can just get out there. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, a, an iron bucket or a galvanized tub that she's probably catching water. So, oh, here's the last picture. So, here we go. Before you, before we stop and judge these people on 
we're looking through our filter and their sense of landscaping and we look at this woman and say my goodness what a cluttered up porch does that lady not have any self-respect <laughs> look at what she's got growing right there yeah. Yeah. she does have an attention for beauty and that quite possibly those are irises that have been handed down for the family for generations it's, and she's proud of her. 1960, she's made a choice to stay there. That's yeah. right, exactly. Sure. And there's something, there's something staked yeah. right here that she's protecting and planting. I don't know what. And you see, this is also a, a matter of practicality. She's got her wood cut, her stove wood. She is still cooking on a, a, a wood stove. She, she's got buckets to catch water on that. <laughs> But she keep, these are, this is stuff that she's going to use. She keeps it close at hand. She does, these old houses didn't have a lot of storage space, space inside. Now she is posing with that churn because I've had many yeah. people tell me you wouldn't sit and churn like that. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't sit in high heels. No, she's proud of that. She would be proud if she still owned that. Absolutely. Because, you know, they were very fine in and this, the behind this photo, I don't know about this woman's name was Ethel Matier. It, the photo was taken by Ernie Dean, who was a well-known uh, historian, journalist, folklorist, university professor. But he is out. He's taking her picture, and I have no doubt that they're talking about the old time ways. So she yeah, had brought her clothes. Look like 1960. Oh yeah, she's. She's dressed modern, but she's wearing high. Now, somebody said if she was really churning, she would have that churn between her legs. Right. You kind of held it with your knees. She's, she's just really, Yeah, it's just a posed picture, absolutely. The first time I went to Mountain View, Arkansas, right off of the downtown square, there were many houses just like this. This was like 1993. I was just flabbergasted. And, you know, a lot of people in that area lived like this until quite recently. It was their way of life. Mm -hmm. And now, this, this, I love this photo. See that dog? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sitting in an iron tub. <laughs> no, no, man. I showed this photo when I learned this. I was in a nursing home doing, this, doing a program with this photo, not the same program. And I, I always loved that. The first time I saw this photo, I loved it because that just seemed so whimsical to me. Yeah. A dog sitting in a tub. And I pointed that out to the people in the nursing home, and the lady said, well, you know why that dog's sitting in there, don't you? I said, no, why? Because she said, that's a mama dog, and there's pups in there. Oh. <laughs> she said, whenever we had, whenever our dog had pups when I was a child, we would, before they was weaned, she said, before they was weaned, we would gather them up and put them in a tub like that to be protected. From something getting them, so that she, and now doesn't that make sense? Why else would a dog just be sitting there? Yeah. See, that's the kind of stuff I can't learn in a history book. That it takes someone that's lived it to tell us about it. I have to wonder if there's some sort of a electrified something in there because of that. I think that's a light switch. Maybe. 1960. She probably has some kind of electricity. Yeah. She may, but her very well may have chosen to use a wood stove. Uh, folk artist Essie Ward, who we have a lot of her paintings in our collection, she grew up in a life just like this, and she lived out in the hills of Searcy County, Arkansas, and uh, she, she achieved some, some fame. She went to the Festival of American Folk Life in Washington, D.C., and hobnobbed with Jimmy Driftwood and was, was well known, sold her paintings all over the country but lived this rural, traditional way of life. And her kids decided, her adult kids, in the, this was in the 70s, her son said, Mama, we are going to get you a gas cook stove. So they, she was still cooking on a wood cook stove. So her son came in, dismantled the wood cook stove, and put it out behind the smokehouse, because he was going to haul it off later, had her new gas cook stove installed. He said, the next time I went to visit Mama, she was out back at the smokehouse where she had to put that wood cook stove back together and was cooking on it outside of the smokehouse. She did not want that gas. Oh, my, 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 my. All right. 
Yes. There's another thing. You're showing catching rain there. Yeah. I've noticed that many of these houses had flaws in the roof, in the shingles. And I didn't see a single metal roof. My great grandfather in the late 1880s built a Manzard brick home, and there's a number of those up through the Midwest at least. And and the and the metal roof lasted into the 1980s or so when my cousin had it replaced. And there were some other older homes that had the metal roof with the fold over, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. those lasted over a hundred years. Almost all the wood, wood houses of that era are gone just because they yeah. have the roofs going. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's now a metal roof you have to purchase. That's right. You had lots of wood. And but then, you know, how many of them knew the old, or followed the superstition, you're only supposed to ride shingles or cut shingles by a certain phase of the moon. <laughs> if you do, and I can't quote you exactly which phase, but if you do it at the wrong time, your shingles will curl and cause leaking. Oh, yeah. Your shingles are curly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any any questions or comments? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's gone. <laughs> oh, the tools are gone.